All right, let me start my bike. It started. So primitive. Uh -huh. They're cool. <laughs> oh, thanks. I think I for sure got the fastest 50 in the world now. I think you got probably one of the fastest bikes in the world. Now cruising with the uh, Red Mad Dog. Got the gas bike and the e-bike. I doubt we can make this ride without one of us breaking down. 57 miles an hour. I said you can try this thing. Do not crash my e-bike. <laughs> You'll see. It's not nothing you've ever rode before. Oh God. I'll get on the dinosaur bike. Huh? It's already on. It's an e-bike. Oh, this thing's a dog. Fuck this. Yeah, this gas engine shit sucks. Stupid fucking fast. I can see what you mean by it's scary with these tiny wheels. It's so weird, it makes no sound. All right, take your dinosaur back. The 1970s called, they want you to bring this to the Smithsonian Institute. Well, the controller came in this fancy box, like fine jewelry. I think I'm gonna put it right up here. I ran this tray on the bottom of this bar instead of the top of it, otherwise it hit the seat. But with it run on the bottom of the bar, it fit. I had cut this tray earlier, and I didn't want to cut up the original one, so I'm gonna use this old tray that's been cut in half. But that seems like a pretty good place to put it. On your display, you're gonna have some wires coming out the back here. This is a DKD display. I'll put a link for this one. You can go with any display you want. Um, if it's compatible, I think it's a one line connector for a far driver. You have to look at your controller you get. But in addition to the power we sent into the display, that's gonna be whatever voltage your e-bike is, you're gonna have a ground coming out of it. So we've got a negative wire and on this one, it's purple. And that can go to any ground. It can go to the 12 volt ground or the 96 volt ground or 72 volt ground. It doesn't really matter. Those grounds are the same. It's got your power in and that's blue with a white stripe. The solid blue one is gonna be your high beams. Now it's just a headlight indicator, but I figured I'd use it for high beams so you can tell when that's on. To get your high beam, it's also gonna be a solid blue on the bike. And the best place to tap that is where it goes into the high beam, you can see the solid blue. And then also where it goes into the switch for the high beams, you'll have a solid blue. But you wanna grab it somewhere on the way out so it's got electricity going to it when the high beams are on and you get this indicator. You're probably wondering where I got this fancy cannon plug to plug it up. That thing fits it perfectly. What that is, is that's the same as this one. It's one of these old switches I had laying around. I just cut the wires off and use this. So I plug that in and I've got all these wires coming down here that I can hook up to stuff. Now the colors don't match of course, so I have to be careful and do it by just pin position. Another one you're gonna have is your left blinker and your right blinker. They're gonna be orange and light blue and just like most Chinese bikes, they're actually that color in real life. So if you look how your blinkers work, this is where it sends the orange wire back to the back and the light blue wire back to the back. There's a whole bundle together. So we can go front blinker, left blinker, and the original indicator. Now I've torn mine down, but you don't have to do that because a real easy access point for these, if you remember that one that has a loop in it like that, that has an orange and a light blue. They're going nowhere. They're not hooked to anything. That's a dead end plug. So you can just tap in your light blue and your orange wires, feed those into your display so you have turn signals. The other wire we're gonna use is the one L-I-N. I don't know if it's one line or one LIN. That is what I use for a far driver controller. Now this display also has these two wires if you're using a different kind of controller, but I'm not gonna need that. So I've got the wires coming out here and I'll make those connections. So all this stuff will be able to hook right to the bike here. The only thing that's gonna go back to the controller is that one LIN, which is yellow with white on it, on the display. And that's gonna have to go all the way back to the one LIN wire that comes out of this plug here. So what I've got is, this is the controller. The battery will have a big fat wire going to the positive and a big fat wire going to the negative. That's gonna power the motor. When I turn that key on, it's gonna send electricity down the black wire. And that's still 96 volts, remember, or 72 volts, whatever your system is. You want this to do three things. 
you want to turn on three things with this that are going to require your 72 volts, 48, 96, wherever you go with the big battery. You're going to power the DC-DC converter. The second thing we're going to do, you see this little blue wire here? It just happens to be blue on mine. That's going to power your display. The display requires the same power as your system, not 12 volts, because it's going to monitor your system and see what your battery voltage is. It'll give you a little battery meter and tell you how full the battery is, how many volts you're putting out, how many amps, things like that. The third thing you want to power when you turn this key on is you want to turn the e-bike on. You want to turn this controller on, and that comes out of a plug here. As far as buttons go, I'm going to have a button here for regenerative braking. Now, brake levers will work with regenerative braking and the back wheel on these things will actually slide. You can brake them so hard, so you almost don't even need rear brakes. Some guys don't run them. But I'm gonna run a button so I have regular disc brakes in the back. I'll use this for my regenerative braking. I think I'm gonna use a start switch for my backup. These things will go in reverse, these electric bikes will. And then I have a one, two, and three power level. So they call it a three speed on these e-bikes, but you're actually gonna go into the software and limit how much one gives, two gives, and three would be wide open, I guess. Yeah, so if you're trying to make it somewhere and you want to get good economy, you can get there without killing your battery. I wanted to keep the cool NCY throttle, so there's many ways to do this. If you go on Amazon, you'll find e-bike throttles. They're kind of cheesy. They make all sorts of kinds, though. They make them with the key switch in there. They make them that read the volts. All sorts of different options, so you don't have to do it this way. But I wanted to keep the NCY throttle just a little bit better feel and quality. It looks cooler. And then I run a cable to this box. Now that box is basically like a e-bike throttle. The traditional throttle pulls the cable, turns the big wheel there. It sends out your power for your throttle to the controller. I'll put a link for this and maybe a couple of other ones in the description. This plugs in here and we're going to have a lot of wires we don't use so it's not too confusing. We have a set which is a throttle and your instructions will show which wires go to what. That's the red, white, green, white, and black one and that'll hook to your throttle. This is not a good hookup. The colors have to go to the colors. So green to green, black to black, red to red. I'll change this side over here. I don't want to do any cutting on the controller. It's pretty expensive so we'll mess around with this cheap ass throttle. So I've got black, green, and red. Of course, on my throttle here, green and black, all in different places. So nothing matches up. Everything I'm reading and everything online say match color to color. So then right here, I cut it and I put black to green, red to black, green to red. And that will make the colors match up when I get here. You've got your motor connector, second motor connector. It's like a backup. We have that one LIN connector I talked about. That's this blue wire if you have a far driver controller, and that's gonna go up to the one LIN connector on the display. One of these is for a USB dongle, so you can hook your phone to it and Bluetooth and set your parameters up right here in the garage. You've got the reverse switch. That's the brown and white wire with the black wire. So that reverse will go up here to this wire I've got coming off my button. I've already got it hanging down here and I've labeled it right there, reverse. Those will get connected. I'm just waiting on a connection. I've ordered some of these connections. We have the e-brake, the black wire, and the yellow wire with the green stripe on it. And that e-brake will go to this wire I have with this button coming down here, right here. This is my reverse, original starter button, and that's coming down to what I'll hook my reverse up to. You've got the three-speed switch. It's another three-wire thing with the blue with the white stripe is low speed and the yellow with the white stripe is high speed. If you don't use a speed switch and you just clip this loop into it, it'll default to high speed always. So if you want the darn thing always in turbo, you don't ever see a reason to go slow, just hook that in, don't even hook up a three speed switch. It defaults to high. And medium is when no switch is selected. So when you loop this, you're selecting the high speed switch. You're connecting this to the yellow with white. But I'm gonna run the speed switch, so I've got my three wires coming out here, and of course the colors won't match or anything. I'll have to do all that myself. And I've got the three speed switch up here. I'll bring it down. Right here is my three speed switch. I wanna make sure the color on these switches go to the right things on here. I don't know which one is one and three. And I'll get a multimeter and test it and see which one that is so I know where to run it to. And that's about all the wires out of here that we're gonna use, so it's not too bad. You will see a steel braided, looks like a shielding wire coming out of the harness for the hall sensors here. The recommendation is to ground this hall sensor shielding wire. And the wires, they're pretty tight. They're just kind of bent around to the side. The typical motors only have three phase wires and the hall wire. But these really big motors, they have two wires for each phase. So they'll have two blues, two yellows, and two greens. So bring our hall motor wire up and our phase wires. 
I think I'll take them all under the bike like this. I might bring the haul on top. Maybe zip tie it down somewhere. They're color coded to carry more amps and current without overheating. They'll give the bigger motors two wires each. You just stack them on top of each other. I really like this stuff, dialectic grease. And I ride my e-bikes in pretty harsh condition. That's the e-bicycles, you know, off-road mountain bikes. So I like to put it on all the connections that I do. Keeps the corrosion down, just creates problems from happening if water gets on them. Here's the hall sensor wire hooked up, the motor hooked up to the controller. Put these little covers like this I got on Amazon. And I have no idea if these can shock you. I know I can touch a 12 volt battery on a car and not get shocked at 96 volts. Will that shock you? I don't know. The guys online are telling me it will. Some are telling me it won't. Some are telling me it just tingles a little. So I'm going to cover them up with these little protectors just so I don't mainly drop a tool on there and arc these things across each other and destroy something because that's usually what I do. I'm going to put a cover over these two also. But yeah, the controller's on. It's wired to the wheel. I've got all the wiring done. I've got it all wrapped up and going up into the box. All right, got my Chinese battery from China. Oh, it's packaged. It came with these cables to transfer power from the battery to the controller. Dual cabled. They said I would need that with that big of a battery. Looks like it comes with a Chinese battery charger. Gotta have that. 110 volt AC, 109.2 volts output. Got instructions. Plug the connection to the battery first, then plug it into the wall. Please do not charge after the battery is completely used up. Not sure what that means. It is strictly prohibited to put the charger in or on the electric vehicle. Huh. Well, that's cool. So these are just extension cables, because I was going to say, these weren't long enough to make it to my controller. But with these coming off the battery and the extension cables, that should be plenty long. Two sets for discharge, and this is for charging. That's even got handles to pick it up. Nice metal box. These are supposed to be some quality batteries, these are more J batteries. So since I don't know anything about them, or any of this stuff, really, I wanted to get the good one and not take a chance. Good God, that thing is heavy. Let's see what it weighs. 76.8 pounds. And they had those things on Amazon that were weighing in at 40, 50 pounds. So the battery is what makes your cool e-bike ugly. I see the ruckus guys hide them down inside there. They're just not gonna have that big of a battery though. I don't know what they're... I think they have them built so they kind of come down inside the chassis down here and then have it come up a little bit higher. I saw a ruckus on YouTube. He said he has a 40 amp hour. It looked like it goes pretty fast and everything, but I can't imagine a lot of range. Now we did the range calculation on these. We're gonna get a lot more range than we calculated. So this is 64 amp hours, 96 volts, pretty big, and I really don't know how I'm gonna put it in there yet. The thing is, is these batteries inside here, like 3.7 volt batteries, look like little double A batteries or whatever. They're a certain size. There can only be a certain amount in a row. They're in, um, I guess, rows of series to get the 96 volts and they parallel those to get your amps. And so you're kind of limited. You can't just do any willy nilly size you want. You're gonna end up with a certain size and then the next size and the next size. So this is 10 and a half inches across here. What I did, I wanted it to fit down inside these. So I actually cut these off, you know, an eighth of an inch on each part. So the box will sit in between here and this will hold it laterally. I've got to have a way to mount this box so it won't fall out down the highway. But at least now it'll sit down between these. Now I just need a way to hold it down and I can use these studs to do this somehow. Get to that bridge when I cross it. But up here on the controller, I've already hooked up the leads positive and negative. You can see I stack these in a crisscross pattern because the things won't line up, but I may do these different, we'll see. I didn't know you could flip flop them upside down like this. These posts are high enough that they'll allow that fat part of the wire to go down on the bottom. So that's kind of cool. So you can actually put the wires right on top of each other like this. It's a little bit cleaner install. All these are hooked up and they're all covered with insulators. You want to get all this hooked up before you add any power to it. Once you add power to it, you could accidentally touch this one to this one, let's say, or this one to that one, and you could damage this controller. And those things are expensive. You don't want to trash a controller right off. So I want to get everything hooked up. So all I have to do is just plug my battery in. And we're not touching any of this anymore. This is done. And over here, I got my battery charging. I have no idea what charge it's at when you get it. So uh, I'll charge it up. And that way, when I plug it in, 
I should have everything 100%. I want it to be 100% when I turn this display on and set it up and tune this controller via Bluetooth. I don't want any other issues. All right, I've plugged these two in. I turned the key on. I have no idea what's gonna happen. When you get your controller and your display, it all seems a bit overwhelming when you see all the wires. It's not that bad. It's actually one of the easiest things I did on this bike is wiring this stuff together. The motor, controller, battery, and display was probably the easiest thing I did. Getting this battery in here, I think I'm gonna go, I kinda wanna keep a traditional Mad Dog look. I'm gonna do something like this. I cut the back of this bar off where it attaches to here. So it still kinda has that Mad Dog look. Got these on AliExpress, these little like threaded spacers. And I got an assortment of other crap. So I'm gonna probably put more in there and I'm gonna bolt it down like that. I'll have these little knurled nuts on top and uh, the threaded stud will come through there and then I'll hand screw them down. Let me tell you what, this bike is so smooth. I think you can hand tighten stuff and it'll work. The days of our stuff rattling off are gone with these e-bikes. That seemed pretty simple and, and it was simple. Next, we're gonna program that display. We're gonna program that controller. We're gonna Bluetooth up to the battery, the controller. Yeah, that one's a bit more involved. That'll be the next video.